Hello, my name's Mike and I've been asked to share my experiences of living with a hybrid closed loop insulin pump. Uh, what that is uh, and uh, what it's like to live with, what it involves. Um, and it's a field of diabetes which is just full of jargon and if, you, if you've never come across the terms it can be a bit bewildering. So I'm just going to run you briefly um, through the basics of what it is. A hybrid closed loop is a combination of diabetes technologies all working together. Now the first thing it involves is an insulin pump and if you've not come across insulin pumps before uh, they're a little box about the size of a pack of cards um, and they contain your rapid acting insulin, your mealtime insulin uh, and uh, some of them have tubes, some of them are tubeless. They're, again there's all different sorts of these things but essentially they all work the same. It's a box which contains insulin and it's a more precise, um, a more subtle way of delivering insulin, um, uh, including your background doses. Because rather than having a background insulin that works uh, on a sort of flattish uh, profile for um, uh, you know best part of 24 hours or sometimes even longer than that, um, uh, an insulin pump only, only uses the, the short acting, the rapid acting insulin. And it just delivers in very small doses uh, sequentially through the day, which means that your background dose, you can have more here and less here and more there and less there. Um, and you can also, if you know you're going to be more active, you can switch that off. And so you will effectively have less insulin active. Uh, they've been around for a while, insulin pumps, and I first used an insulin pump in 2010, I think. The first one I used was the Minimed Paradigm Veo. And I chose that one because it had the ability to connect with a continuous glucose monitor. I never actually ended up <laughs> connecting it because I couldn't afford it at the time. And the second one I had was a step up from that um, and it was the, the 640G, the, the Minimed 640G. And that had a slightly different way of the pump and the, and the continuous glucose sensor working together. Um, but what's a continuous glucose sensor? So if you've not come across those, it's a, a little device that, that sits, uh, I wear mine on the back of my arm, there, forgot what side it was on. I wear mine on the back of my arm. Um, uh, and it's a little device that sits under the skin and it measures the glucose in the fluid around um, your, your tissue cells. It's not exactly the same as uh, your blood glucose finger prick test that you do, but what it's able to do is because it's always there, is it's able to, to take a reading of your glucose levels um, every five minutes. So you get, um, you get a continuous trace of information of not only what your levels are, uh, but also what direction they're heading and how quickly. So suddenly, rather than a finger prick test, just showing you one number and, and that's it, you can see that that one number actually is on an upward slope or is on a downward slope or is on a really steep upward slope or is on a really steep downward slope. And that can help you it can be a bit bewildering, but it, it can help you make more informed um, diabetes decisions. Uh, many of you may have come across the Freestyle Libre or the Freestyle Libre 2. Um, and the Libre 2, of course, has alarms. And that's another thing that continuous sensors, um, particularly the, you know, the full on CGMs, um, can offer you. They can, they can alert you when you are reaching a higher level than you want or a lower level or approaching a lower level than you want. So you've already got these two really powerful pieces of, of uh, diabetes kit that can really help you uh, improve your diabetes management. They're more precise and they can give you more information and you have a, a better ability to sort of react to things. And then what happens is they start to, to get these to work together. And that's where the term hybrid closed loop or looping or sensor augmented insulin pump, but that's where these terms um, uh, start to emerge. It's when your insulin pump can talk to your glucose sensor and then they've got a little brain, often called an algorithm, inside them. And again, the different versions of this technology have slightly different approaches to this, but they've got a little brain that watches and actually acts on your behalf uh, in ways that you can, you can define and, uh, and with, uh, with safety caveats. And my first insulin pump the Minimed Veil was the, was the first commercially available um, uh, device that had this connection. And what it did was it, if your levels got down to hypo levels below four, 
it stopped your background insulin. And that helped to prevent people from going really low. Maybe it was overnight and they were asleep. Um, uh, by the time you got to hypo, it would shut off your insulin supply um, for, a, for a period of time so that you wouldn't carry on going lower and lower and lower. And then the 640, the first time I actually used sensors and pumped together, um, what that did was it started to be a little bit smarter and it was looking ahead half an hour. And it was going, where are we going to be in half an hour's time? Are we dropping? Are we going to be still, have we still got a bit of a cushion? Because the thing about shutting off your background insulin is that it doesn't act straight away. You've still got the background insulin that, that your pump is being delivered, you know, up until that moment. And, and it, it starts to it starts to take effect over half an hour or an hour that you, you start to get a sort of leveling off of your of your glucose um, descent. Um, so it needs to work in good time. So what the Minimed 640G introduced was something called predictive low glucose suspend. It would look ahead and it would know that with the way that you were going, in half an hour's time, you were going to be pretty close to the edge and it would, it would suspend your insulin, um, uh, background insulin, earlier. Uh, and for me, uh, the first experience of, I'd, I'd, used, I'd used continuous sensors, but I'd never had these things working together. That was an absolute revelation. Uh, and it, it, it cut out, I don't know, probably 90% of my low-level dips into hypoglycemia. Um, it couldn't catch them all. Uh, uh, and I still needed to, to um, you know, intervene occasionally, and I still need to keep a close eye on things. But the little low drifty ones and the stuff that happens where you just kind of dip a bit overnight, the vast majority of those, it caught early enough and was just able to bring me up so I might get to like 4 or 4.2 or maybe 3.9, but then it would just, and it would just get me out. Uh, uh, of trouble and it would bring things up onto an even keel. Now of course because it's an automated system you need to be providing it with the information it needs um, and so sometimes if my um, if my settings on the pump weren't quite right it would bring me up and then I would keep going up too high but that was just usually that was that was just my settings my insulin needs had changed as they do over the year we all know the drill you know you get it working and it's fine for a fortnight and then it, it suddenly it, it all uh, it all falls to pieces again um, but but overall my um, my levels really really improved because a lot of the the highs I was getting were as a result of over treating loads so actually, even though it was only protecting me from, from those kind of hypos, uh, it helped enormously at the top end as well. And then they got even smarter uh, and they, they became, rather than just glucose suspend, they started using this term of hybrid closed loop. And what they ended up doing was not just reducing basal, but also noticing when things were at the other end, when they were going slightly too high, and uh, this pump, first of all, it will cautiously increase my basal and it will see whether that will sort it out. If I'm just kind of drifting, 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 coming up and, and for whatever reason, my calculations on food haven't been correct. Um, and then after that, if that's not enough, after a, after a while, it'll, it'll tell me that, you know, things are uh, struggling a bit. Um, and it will also introduce little um, bolus correction doses. Um, uh, and again, this is, this is just a pieces of your diabetes technology working together for you and doing some of the thinking on your behalf. So uh, it, while it doesn't mean that I can just completely switch off and just leave it to its own devices, what it does mean is that, is that there's a sort of reduction in the burden of thinking that you have to do. And sometimes you can make slightly bolder decisions knowing that you've got these, uh, these, these kind of levels of... of you know, smart gadgetry working together to sort of help out. So if you're not really sure whether you've kind of quite um, uh, carb counted that meal out well enough, you can give it a good guess, but you can be, you can have some reassurance that if you've made a bit of a mistake, um, then, then your technology will try and help you out. If you've made a massive mistake, obviously it's not going to catch it. And then you'll get the alarms and the alerts and you may have to intervene. So what are these things like to live with day to day? Um, well, as I say, generally, 
they are really helpful. Well, I find them really helpful. It's a, you have to get a bit used to it. I mean, if you've never used an insulin pump before, that's one whole thing to get used to. It's a, it's a different way, a different mindset of, of um, dosing your insulin and the things that you can do, the new options you've got about spreading insulin over a longer period, about, about uh, stopping your background dose in advance of activity uh, or reducing it, switching to a different profile perhaps, or whatever your pump allows you to do. Uh, with these algorithms, with these um, uh, hybrid closed loop systems, often they take some of those options away from you because you don't really need them anymore. But what that means is you have to learn what the technology needs from you in order to work well for your own particular diabetes. And with this one, one of the things it adds is a nighttime setting. So when I go to bed, um, it, its brain behaves differently to uh, it does during the day. And also there's an exercise, an activity uh, uh, you know, option that I can turn on. And again, that just changes the settings because all of these algorithms with the brains of the system, they, um, they've got certain settings and certain situations where they will and won't act. And you know, what's happened before and whether there's insulin on board and all these kind of complicated factors that they take into account on your behalf. And at night time, with the, the, uh, the sort of sleep setting, I've set the pump up uh, that it'll just switch on automatically when I normally go to bed, and then it'll turn off when I normally wake up. And my nighttime levels have just never been better, even with the predictive low glucose suspend experience that I had before, which solved so many um, irritations for me, that the, 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 the newer, smarter technology has just helped. So, I, you know, it's a real surprise for me now when I wake up in the morning, if this is all working properly and I'm, I'm not like in the middle of my range, my target range. Um, so as the technology has, has developed and grown, it's just improved my, uh, my life with diabetes. I get better results. I, I still have to put effort in. I still have to, you know, carb count my meals and, and make my best guesses about the effect of activity and I, I have to keep an eye on things and I have to just not leave it to its own devices entirely because sometimes the drop will be too steep and I'll need to you know pre-treat a hypo but by watching the sensor traces and having the alarms at appropriate levels that I've kind of worked out um, but but for the for the sort of little drifts the little uh, irritating you know suddenly um, doing your uh, finger prick test before a meal and going, oh, I'm, no, I'm 11, you know, rather than being like seven or, or six. And you've just drifted up in a way that's not dramatic, um, but, uh, but uh, you know, you're just a little bit higher. It, it, can, it can smooth out some of those ragged edges. Um, uh, and you, you have to just keep, you have to keep on top of, of your settings and your insulin sensitivity with this system. Other systems work differently. Um, uh, but but overall, for me, hybrid closed loop has given me better results, more what they call time in range. The, the amount of time I spend between four and ten has never been better than with using this technology. So, uh, so yeah, if you're interested, ask your clinic about it. Um, getting access to the sensors is a bit tricky because the NHS don't fund them for everyone. So I self-fund my sensors um, uh, and that may not be uh, uh, practical for everyone. Uh, and with my last pump, I self-funded them for as much of the time as I could manage, which was about half the year. And there are ways of, of making that more effective. Um, and hopefully in the future, as this technology becomes more widely available, sensor access will be, will be broader. And things like the sensors that you can get on the NHS, like the Libra 2, might work, or if it becomes a different version of that, might, might start to work with different versions of the, the pumping technology that comes out. But all of these things are kind of emerging, they're rolling, and as more people adopt the technology, hopefully the access um, will, in, will just gradually improve as well, so that more people can access the smarter bits of the technology um, and, get the, and get the best out of it, get the benefits. I hope that's helped. Um, uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, I, I, I'm connected to the Diabetes UK forum, so if you've got questions and want to wanna, um, compare notes with, with people who are using this technology, you can sign up there for free. There's a friendly community of people of all types of diabetes uh, and with all lengths and durations and experiences. And uh, yeah, they'd be delighted to share experiences with you. Have a good day.